morning folks in YouTube land. So my very last video I did talk about in a shit hit the fan situation, SHTF situation as some of the preppers would call it. What if somebody came to your door asking for help? And what might you think about when receiving that request for help. I kind of wanted to do the same video again, but more so on the perspective of the person who is coming to knock on your door and what they might be thinking, what might they be going through physically, mentally. There's two types of people I believe, I am no professional, but I believe there's two types of people that are gonna be coming to your door. One, they don't know you from Adam, and they're just going around the neighborhood scavenging, looking for food. The second person might be a friend or somebody you attempted to talk into prepping. Now, let's face it, when you try to talk a friend into prepping, it kind of alludes to the point that you've been prepping. The conversation might go in different directions for different folks. It might lead into, okay, uh, Brian, what should I be prepping? Oh, uh, oh, Joe, Shamo, you should be prepping some food, uh, guns, uh, some silver, you know, some water supplies, some, you know, some first aid stuff. Oh, and that's what you got? Yeah, it's what the family and I have been doing, you know, for the last two, three years. Yeah, it's what I recommend you doing. Okay, Brian, the wife and I will, you know, we'll discuss it. But I don't think this is really up our alley. I think you're being paranoid. That's the second person, you know, the friend that you might have tried to persuade uh, to, into prepping. Let's face it, when you tell somebody, I think you should prep, that kind of alludes to you're a prepper too. Okay, so now the shit hit the fan situation has arrived. SHTF is here. Korea has just fulfilled their promise and nuked. <coughs> Along with the nuclear devastation, which has rippled effect, it caused a ripple effect on our economy. Banks are no longer allowing money to leave their banks. Electricity might be down. Grocery stores are no longer being replenished, and the shelves just have a few meager things on them, and the lines waiting for those meager things are over a quarter of a mile long. And even if you did have some cash stashed, it's virtually worthless in this situation. You would need a wheelbarrow of money, perhaps, just to get a gallon of milk. So SHTF is here. And you got your cupboards full of your supplies. And one evening, just after you had a good meal, your, your house is smelling of the freshly cooked chicken that you've had. You hear a knock on the door. Hi, um, I, I don't think you know us, but we lived about two streets down. Well, we still do, um, but um, we're just going around and seeing how you doing, checking up on you. And, so wondering if you might have any items to spare. Um, I have a kid here and she hasn't eaten in, in, in close to a day and a half. And I was wondering if there's anything you can help us with. Anything at all, we won't bother you again, I promise. There's about three things that you can do actually in this situation. One is to outright help them. Give them something from your cupboards. 
I don't recommend that. The second thing, if your heart is in the right place and feel like helping them, but it does come with repercussions, the second thing is, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm willing to help you out, but I got nothing here in this house. I did get some information that there's some food about three blocks away. I'll tell you what, you and I will meet in about a half an hour at that uh, park. You know that, that public park where they used to hold the concerts at and, and whatnot? We'll meet you there. I'll give you some supplies there after I go get some from where I was told there or some. In this situation, they might believe that, hey, there is no food in your house and that you know of a, an obscured place to get some and then you can basically, once they leave, take it out of your cupboards and go meet them at the park. It's called OPSEC, Operation Security. Because trust me, there is repercussions with helping these folks. Because there's no food in those grocery stores. They're gonna run out of their, those supplies that you helped them with. And they're gonna be coming back because they saw you opening up cupboards and whatnot. They're gonna be coming back again and again and again until you say no. And then they will take it by force. And if they can't or, or they're not strong enough, they will join up with others who are just as desperate and come kicking in your doors and taking it by force. So that's scenario two. The third scenario is, I'm sorry, I ain't got nothing, I can't help you, goodbye. Boom. It's a possibility they'll never come back again, never bother you, but you're gonna have to live in your heart that you didn't help them out. It's something that you have to decide whether you wanna do. Second person I've already mentioned might be a friend that you've known. They might not or might know that you're a prepper. If they're a good friend, they probably know you're a prepper. Hey, Brian, what's up? God, it smells good in here. How you doing? Hey, Joe Schmo, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope things are doing all right for you folks. Well, they could be fit, you know, they could be better, you know. We should have taken your advice on prepping and storing some food. And that kind of leads me to the point of why I'm here. I'm wondering if you can help a brother out, man. This is where things get touchy. You're going to have to tell this guy yes or no. He already knows you have food. Chances are he does. There's no lying to this guy. You have to stand up for yourself, say no, or say yes. When you say yes, there's repercussions because he's gonna run out of his supplies. Whatever you give him, you give him a pound, two pounds, a bag of rice. You give him a couple of those big, what do they call them? Number 12 or 66 cans, they, the, the size is irrelevant. You can give him a couple of big cans of beans and some rice. Within days, he's gonna go through it. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Hey, thanks for helping me out with that. Hey, listen, I was wondering if you can help me out again. I I, I ran out, uh, you know, grocery stores. All the windows are smashed now. There's nothing left on the shelves. Uh, help a brother out again, please. Appreciate it. There's the repercussion. So from the get-go, maybe you should tell him no and don't come back here. But then he leaves an enemy. He might come back in the still of the night by himself trying to break in or something. If he's not big and bad enough, he might again group up with other foragers who are just as desperate. Some of them might be gang members and have guns. They're going to be coming to your house with full force. Might start shooting through the walls, through the windows, kicking in your doors. These are just some of the things you're going to have to think about. 
I encourage you all to start thinking about scenarios like this in your head and how you would handle them. You'd be better prepared if you would play out these scenarios in your mind. I kind of like helping people, but I kind of would lie and say, I don't have anything here. I'll meet you at X location while I go and get it from the other location. And that way, if they do come back, <coughs> you can always say, uh, hey, I ran out of a connection. I have nothing here. I, I don't know. It just, you're just going to have to think about it. You're going to have to think about what you're going to do in those situations. A lot of people are not prepping. They're thinking that we are crazy folks. I am not crazy. I am not crazy by any means. And I don't have fantasies about being in such a situation. I don't have, I don't romanticize about taking out my guns and dressing up in camo like you see a lot of people on YouTube doing. I'm prepared to do what I gotta do to defend myself. But I don't romanticize about pulling a gun on somebody. I would imagine shooting somebody and killing somebody is like having a dirt on you that will never, ever wash off again. I'll do it if I have to. But it's the last thing I ever want to do. So I'm going to let you go with those thoughts. I appreciate if you can give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Appreciate if you can watch my very last video that I did about the same subject matter. Things are getting real out there. Take care, folks.